Good afternoon. Thanks for uh, coming down today. I'm going to start this press conference with uh, a, a brief statement by our mayor, Osby Davis, and then I'll follow with uh, details. Thank you and good afternoon. Um, as you already know, um, we experienced a 6.0 earthquake at approximately 3.20 on yesterday, on Sunday morning. Uh, at the time of the earthquake, I immediately contacted our manager, uh, Dan King, who had already been contacted by Police Chief Joe Crimes. The managers had already given the order at 3.40 a.m. to activate the Emergency Operations Center. And by 4, 4 a.m., the Emergency Operations Center was up and active. I arrived at the Emergency Operations Center at approximately 4.30 a.m. along with the city manager, Dan Keene. And at that time, the majority of the emergency operating team was already there and in place and had taken matters under control. Public Works was there, and at that time, Public Works had already dispatched some personnel to deal with water main breaks and report of gas leaks. Police Chief Crines was on the scene along with Sergeant Hamrick as well as the um, Public Works Director as I indicated along with Craig Whittem of City Manager's Office was already there and calling in staff to assist with the situation. Our IT Director Greg Taylor was there. Uh, a preliminary assessment was immediately made by the Fire Chief um, Chief MacArthur, and based upon the information obtained at that time, developed a plan to deal with the contingencies. As daylight came, Chief MacArthur, City Manager Keene, and myself toured our downtown area, Mare Island, and surrounding areas to assess the damage and to see what the situation really was. Within two hours of the earthquake, there was a complete emergency operation team in place assessing and dealing with emergencies. I want to thank our Vallejo emergency team for its rapid assessment and response during this difficult time. I thank all of them for a job well done. I think you needed to be there to see how professionally and efficiently they got into what needed to be done and did it without hesitation. I also want to thank Sheriff uh, Ferrar for assistance of his department. He is always willing to assist and provided mutual aid and assistance on Sunday and, as I understand, is still providing mutual aid and assistance. I also want to thank the surrounding agencies who also offered and have stood by and offered um, assistance when and where needed. I'd like to acknowledge that I received calls from Congressman uh, Thompson offering assistance as well as Assemblywoman Susan Bonilla and Congressman, I mean, and Senator uh, Barbara Boxer's office. We thank them for their uh, interest and their willingness to help. I'm also thankful that there were no deaths and no serious injuries. However, there were some property damage in various properties, and as we begin to assess uh, the situation, we find that there's more, and the manager will discuss that momentarily. But I want to thank Public Works for its immediate action because by its action in dealing with the broken uh, water mains, they prevented a lot of property damage and inconvenience to the public. I also want to thank the public for their calm response and assessment of the situation and uh, their working with the staff to make sure that things get taken care of. I want to assure the public that we have a professional uh, operations, emergency operations team and has done a remarkable job under these circumstances. I am proud of the things that they have done and the rapidity in which they took care of matters. Um, you had to see it to really appreciate it. I mean, everybody showed up and everybody began to work without uh, needing to be prompted. So with that, again, I want to thank them for a job well done let the public know that you're in good hands and I'll turn it over to our city manager, Dan Keene, to give you a status of today and what's coming in the future. Thank you, Mayor Davis. Uh, I'll begin by reading a statement, uh, and then we will, uh, we'll, uh, 
uh, commence with the uh, questions. Uh, so at approximately 4 o'clock yesterday morning, uh, the city of Vallejo convened its emergency operations center uh, in response to the earthquake that occurred about 3.20. Uh, our objective initially was to ensure the safety and security of our residents and businesses and visitors. Uh, since the earthquake, uh, we have staffed up police and, f and fire personnel to respond to calls and to protect the public. And uh, we very much appreciate the calm way our community responded to what was a very serious event, probably the most serious event uh, that many of our residents had experienced in their time in the city. Um, the enhanced staffing and the neighborly efforts of our community uh, were successful in helping us identify safety issues very quickly in the, in the 36 hours. Uh, we recognize that uh, residents and businesses are continuing to call us uh, with issues as they discover them, uh, particularly this morning uh, as people came back to their business places uh, and uh, recognized something wasn't quite right, uh, we were getting those calls. Um, we are going to continue to work with property owners to support the repair of facilities. Uh, that is really our focus now is uh, to continue the assessment of the damage and then to assist those property owners in getting things uh, repaired. Uh, we are a very incredibly strong and resilient community. I think this event uh, illustrates that well, and uh, uh, this, the efforts during this event really reflect those strengths. Communication has been extremely important throughout uh, this incident. Uh, we issued five press releases uh, through the day yesterday, and we have communicated through social media, which has also been an effective tool for us. Uh, we have established a couple of communication methods going forward uh, for residents and, and businesses if they have questions about potential damages to their building. We have a special email address. It is earthquake2014, all one word, at ci.valeo.ca.us. Uh, or there is a message line uh, which is 707-651-7144. Uh, calls or emails to those addresses will allow us to uh, very quickly respond to an earthquake related incident that uh, has been discovered. Uh, today our efforts are focused on building and property assessment uh, and addressing business needs related to property damage and restoration of fire suppression systems. Our city crews assisted by other agencies are providing inspections throughout the week to determine which additional buildings need to be red tagged prohibiting use yellow tag for partial use, or green tag for full use. So as of noon today, we have approximately 10 buildings that have been red tagged for non-use. Um, all of those are commercial. One of them is a mixed-use building, including the post office at 485 Santa Clara Street. We have 34 buildings across the city that have been yellow tagged, uh, meaning that there is something wrong there, but they're allowed for partial use but need to correct a problem. We had a total of 13 uh, water main breaks that were related to the earthquake uh, in the immediate uh, hours after the incident. Um, water service has been restored to all of the residents in the city, uh, except those who had an internal problem that uh, may have related to damage on their property. But all of our water main breaks have been repaired. We have uh, discovered another eight water main breaks, however, today. Uh, we have five crews out working on those on those water main breaks. We had a lot of issues out on Mare Island. Uh, as you know, Mare Island is a uh, is an area that is is um, filled with uh, many historic structures that date back uh, some over a hundred years, and uh, we saw a lot of uh, damage initially, primarily water main breaks uh, and water related issues, fire fire suppression. Uh, there are certain businesses out on Mare Island that are still without water service, but primarily due to the fact that there's some internal um, uh, damage that occurred uh, to the fire, pr pr uh, fire suppression system or the plumbing that needs to be corrected. Uh, there were a reported 49 total injuries um, that were reported to us, uh, two of which were uh, resulted in uh, admissions to the hospital. Uh, the County of Solano uh, has uh, its own facilities here which have been affected by this incident uh, and they have a couple of buildings that are, that are currently not in use. Uh, Lenar Mare Island, as I mentioned, the city's partner in the um, management of many of the buildings out on Mare Island is working very actively to get those businesses out there. As, as you may or may not know, we have about 100 businesses 
that have established on Mare Island uh, in the, uh, former, uh, the former base and uh, there are over 2,200 employees. So it's very important to us that we get those businesses back up and running. And uh, Mar Lenar Mare Island is working with a, a, a team of engineers uh, to get that to happen quickly. And then the Vallejo City Unified School District has also been engaged in assessing um, the condition of their buildings. Uh, the city is also pursuing assistance for residents and businesses from its state and federal partner agencies that uh, impacted by the earthquake. At the present time, however, we have no public assistance available, but we do anticipate additional information about whether assistance will be available by Wednesday, and we'll continue to provide updates through our press releases and other social media channels uh, uh, as the week goes on. Tomorrow night, we have a city council meeting here, and I will be asking the city council to confirm uh, the emergency, emergency proclamation uh, that I signed yesterday, uh, declaring a local emergency in the city of Vallejo. Uh, we will continue to issue uh, daily press releases through Friday uh, with an update regarding the status of the community's response to this earthquake. And uh, this will also be available on our Facebook page and uh, through the community, community's next door network. Uh, I want to, um, on behalf of the city, uh, <coughs> thank the cities of Benicia, American Canyon, Crockett, Fairfield, Cordelia, uh, Solano County Sheriff, Red Cross, Salvation Army, Medic Ambulance, and the Vallejo Sanitation and Flood Control District for the way in which they collaborated with the city. Uh, when we came to the EOC, I arrived about 4.20, uh, the room was staffed. We had uh, all of our staff there, we had the other agencies there, and they, they were there with us throughout the day, uh, all 15 hours, uh, until we went to level two status uh, in the early evening. Uh, we are continuing to operate our EOC at level two. That means that there is somebody there uh, monitoring and continuing to um, log issues if they come up and, uh, and then dispatching uh, uh, staff resources to respond if uh, they come up. Uh, that concludes my uh, prepared statement. I'm going to be happy to uh, respond to questions. We have present here uh, next to me, uh, next to the mayor, uh, Fire Chief Jack MacArthur and uh, Police Chief Joe Crimes. Yes. Did you, just to, just to clarify, did you say the main post office is Red Tank? Uh, the post office at 485 Santa Clara Street, yes. Which is the main post office of the city? Uh, it is not the main post office. It's not the main post office, okay. And also, is uh, uh, the eight new water main breaks, is that included in the 13 or an addition? It was an addition. Uh, as we, uh, as we uh, brought the system back up, we had other breaks that were related to the initial breaks. 49 total injuries and can you give some sort of indication on how serious they were and what type? We don't have a lot of information that was reported to us by the hospitals. Uh, it does not sound as if many of them were too serious um, uh, and uh, uh, two, uh, two of them resulted in admissions. Uh, so we, we don't believe they were too serious. Yes, sir. Earlier this morning we, we spoke about the uh, damage estimate. Yes. Uh, you, you had the $5 million. About 5.2, yes. Go higher, go lower. Well, one of the things we're really focusing on right now, we've had a lot of calls and we continue to get calls from uh, residents primarily who uh, have uh, discovered damage um, chimneys. We have a lot of historic homes in a historic district um, and many of those uh, homes with chimneys, brick chimneys, were damaged. And so we're continuing to get those calls. Uh, we also are uh, assessing out on Mare Island uh, mostly the occupied buildings. There are unoccupied buildings there that we expect would also uh, reveal some damage. So our preliminary estimate is 5.2 million, uh, but that is very likely to uh, change as we get better information. We have a team of uh, building inspectors and structural engineers, both from within our agency and uh, from outside this agency, uh, with the assistance of the State Office of Emergency Services and the Salon County uh, Emergency Services, and that will assist us in getting uh, the best accurate picture of, of, of what the real dollars are likely to be. Dan, if you factor in all of the, uh, uh, for example, all the broken windows on the storefront windows over there on Tennessee, do you have a number for the total number of properties impacted by this? I don't think we have an actual number uh, at this point. Uh, that's part of our assessment is to really tally up everything and to uh, 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 some of that, some of those properties uh, corrected the problem themselves and, and didn't necessarily contact us, so we don't have that yet. We will have that towards the end of the week. Yes, sir, in the back. Uh, my name's Sam Kershan. 
I'm a citizen of Vallejo, and I, I told you this personally earlier, but I want to say this publicly. I've never been more proud and impressed by the way this city has handled the, themselves and reached out to its citizens amidst this tragedy. The professionalism and the level of communication couldn't be better, and it's very reassuring to have this happen. I just want to thank you and tell you all about this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christian. Yes, ma'am. For businesses that don't have, maybe don't have earthquake insurance or don't have any sort of insurance coverage to pay for the damage, what kind of resources will be available to them potentially from the city or state? We don't know at this point, but that's certainly one of the things we're very interested in exploring with our state and uh, potentially federal partners. Uh, as, uh, as the mayor mentioned, uh, we've had um, um, contact early here uh, with our congressman, as well as uh, our two state senators' offices, and uh, of course our supervisor and our other uh, and the state uh, OES. Oh, yeah. So we will be pursuing that angle uh, uh, diligently here once we get past the assessment phase. Yes, ma'am. You talk about the types of businesses affected and maybe the larger businesses in Vallejo by name, by name that were affected? Uh, that's tough. Uh, we had a whole lot of businesses, uh, particularly on Tennessee Street, uh, as you drive out Tennessee Street from uh, Sonoma Boulevard, um, uh, typical retail establishments uh, with large plate glass windows that, that shattered in the quake. Uh, out on Mare Island, um, several businesses, uh, Blue Homes had some some damage to their their plant uh, and close is another uh, tenant there. Alco Metal had uh, some water leaks, but uh, don't think I could give you a completely comprehensive uh, identification. Uh, all of it is, uh, uh, you know, more or less related to the kinds of damage that we saw in other places: so broken glass, um, water water line issues, uh, fire suppression systems that weren't functioning or could not function because we had to turn the water off due to a leak inside. That sort of thing. Yes, sir. Um, one of the uh, owners of one of the buildings on the 900 block of Tennessee told me that he, he was told that the West Napa Fault runs directly beneath that block. Do you, does anyone here know if that is in fact the case? I don't know that. No. I read the same things that you've read about the West Napa Fault this morning, which was it was an obscure fault line, so I, I don't know. Yes, sir. Were there uh, any reports of looting? Uh, we had minor reports uh, early on that there were uh, there was possibly some looting. I don't think uh, it was uh, anything that uh, um, I would say got out of hand. We uh, we uh, we didn't uh, get any other reports of that. Very sporadic. Yes. How many people were evacuated um, because of the damages? Well, uh, what we know about, we had a building downtown uh, that was uh, a residential structure next to a structure that uh, partially collapsed. And um, the owner, uh, same owner of those buildings, um, uh, evacuated those individuals, uh, and I think there were eight of them. And um, other than that, uh, we had some uh, students out on Mare Island, uh, Toro University students, who uh, uh, were renting a house, I believe there were 12 there. So um, about 20. I don't know of any others. Um, early on we thought there might be more, but it uh, turned out to be we were able to stabilize things. And, uh, so that's what we know of. And they haven't been, been able to come back at this point? No. Uh, yes, sir. Fires and gas leaks? Uh, we had no fires due to gas leaks. No, we were very fortunate. We had gas leaks, for sure. We had, uh, in fact, the earliest calls were water heaters, and uh, we had gas leaks, but we did not have any fires. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk a little bit about your process as far as exactly what happened after the earthquake and where did you meet and <coughs> what, how, what's the focus on right away? Well, the focus is easy. It's, it's on uh, it's preserving life safety and making sure that, uh, that the community's immediate needs of safety are addressed. Um, when the earthquake happened, as you know, uh, as you might imagine, the employees are distributed all over all over the, the area, uh, not necessarily in the city of Vallejo, some. Um, our fire chief here is, is in the city. Uh, but um, we were immediately on the phone to each other, um, uh, texting and calling, and, um, and it was uh, uh, to the credit of our team, um, most of them immediately got in their cars and came to our emergency operations center, which is at Fire Station 21 downtown here. And, um, and established the, the fire station, the, uh, the EOC, as they had been trained 
Um, we are a city that are, we are proud to say has gone through an extensive amount of staff training in the last year. Uh, staff training is provided by the state but funded by, uh, in part by our Measure B sales tax that we, we sent them, the city council appropriated funds. And uh, so we've sent uh, well over 100 of our employees and it really paid off. Uh, those, those employees uh, came in and, and assumed the roles that they had been trained and, uh, and we, were, uh, we were up and running uh, immediately. We had a uh, few technology issues which were very quickly resolved. And uh, we had volunteers providing food. We had uh, Red Cross uh, uh, coordinating with us on uh, shelter needs. And uh, um, the process uh, really kind of goes through the day of uh, assessing the, the current issues and what, is, what, what we were facing at that moment, uh, what were the most critical issues, and then dispatching resources to make sure that we addressed the most urgent. You might, you might imagine that those water main leaks were, were among the highest priorities to us uh, for lots of reasons, not just fire suppression, but to prevent further damage. And uh, so that's, that was really the, the primary focus. And then uh, as the day went on and people began, as, as the sun came up and people began to discover damage, then it was, it was focusing on assessing you know, what is a dangerous situation and what is just something that needs to be corrected. Has anyone used the Red Cross shelter? Uh, to best my knowledge, nobody used the, the Red Cross shelters. Uh, it was open and available through the day yesterday and then shut down, and I believe they've moved up to Napa. And uh, how many inspectors and structural engineers do you have working? How much more work do they have to do? <coughs> what kind of shifts are they working? Uh, probably, I'm going to ask my uh, city engineer, Jill Mercurio, to come down and ask that specific question. Jill? Good afternoon. We have approximately uh, five building inspectors, five engineers, and four construction inspectors on site today doing assessments. We expect to get more from the county and from the state in the days to come. Um, they will work until we get certain blocks of what we've deemed to be areas of concern assessed and all of the buildings in those areas will receive a red, yellow, or green tag indicating the occupancy and use of that structure. Um, we anticipate this will take uh, a week or two to finish those up and they're being prioritized as the calls come in and the initial damage uh, reports are received. Can you give us an idea of how many blocks? I'm just trying to get a sense of how much work still lies ahead. Uh, we did what are called windshield surveys yesterday and drove around specifically the historic districts in downtown as well as Mare Island and our commercial districts to determine what the initial damages were. We are going in and doing more detailed assessments for the rest of this week um, and this, it'll be most of the downtown and the historic districts. Um, there have been some reports up uh, north of 37 so we're doing some sporadic uh, responses to areas up there where people have been requesting inspection services. Um, so I'm, I'm expecting a good uh, you know, one to two weeks more of assessments to occur. Can you spell your name please? My name is Jill Mercurio, M-E-R-C-U-R-I-O. And your title, you're the city engineer? I'm the city engineer. I want to add again that we are that uh, over at uh, Mare Island, they're also doing uh, the same kind of assessment, and uh, in that case, much of that work is being done by a engineering team that uh, Lenar Mare Island has arranged to come on and assist them. So they're also working with us. Uh, Mark, Dan, yes. uh, was there any damage to any city facilities? Uh, there was certainly there was some damage to city buildings, um, none uh, too serious, at least that at, that we know of as yet. Um, there was a chimney down on the community center, for example, uh, and uh, of course here in City Hall and over at the police station, it was a lot of uh, mostly cosmetic, cosmetic damage. But we have not completed that full assessment. Yes, ma'am. You called um, the looting very sporadic and said it didn't get out of hand. Do you have any numbers on how many people may have been arrested for such a crime? I'll ask Chief Crimes to respond to that. No one was arrested. We had a few calls of uh, some potential looting responded to the area, and uh, I think 
actually chased off a few folks, but there were actually no reported thefts and, and no actual reported looting. We, we did get some calls of folks going into buildings, uh, and I think a lot of it had to do with the, the high visibility and the presence that we had in that particular area, especially in the downtown core and in and around Tennessee Street. Um, and we had uh, literally doubled our staffing uh, by late yesterday, and, and that staffing remained again today. And I think a lot of that uh, had to do with, with that issue. But I mean, in addition to that, I, I can't even begin to tell you how proud we are of the residents of this community because everybody stepped up and uh, remained calm and, and stayed out of areas that, you know, that, that clearly had problems. And so uh, that never became a, a significant problem for, or issue for us in any way. Yes. Do you mind giving me that email address one more time? That's of course. 2014. So it's uh, 2014 uh, earthquake 2014 at ci.valeo.ca.us. And that's any earthquake related problem. Right. If, if, if a resident or business has a concern that something has happened that is related to the earthquake, um, we encourage them to use that or they can call us. And uh, we will dispatch uh, the appropriate uh, person out there to, to check that out and, and to advise them on, uh, on, on whether it is a safe condition and, and then also how to take care of that, that condition. Yes, ma'am? You're talking about the injuries. Were most people able to take themselves to the hospital, or was this a mass casualty type of incident where ambulances had to come in from out of town and help out? Oh, no, I believe it was the former. It was the former. We, uh, th this, these, were, um, these were minor injuries. Yes. The gentleman here first. I want to jump to speak specifically to the, uh, the, the museum over on Bear Island, uh, which uh, is red tag at this point. Uh, can you say exactly why, what the issues are there, and what the chances are that that will be able to be open? The uh, museum on Bear Island was red tagged yesterday due to reports of structural uh, instability. We have not yet had an assessment done on that building to realize the full uh, implications of that. The intention would be to repair um, and get that back up and running, but we do not have a date for that yet. Are there any other buildings that are in immediate danger of collapse, possibly, because they've been red tagged? Any churches or anything? No, the one of the buildings that was um, more significantly damaged was on Georgia Street, and Georgia Street is cordoned off while the building is being um, addressed right now. I believe that there's some demolition going on. Which building was that? That's not the church, right? It is not the church, no. So you don't know anything about church? I'm unaware of any significant church damage. <laughs> the city manager has something to report. <laughs> so as the nature of this event has been, we, uh, we continue to get information. We just received information uh, that there is a church at the corner of uh, Carolina and Sonoma, uh, which has uh, a very, uh, uh, very um, uh, shaky uh, building condition and uh, we are shutting down uh, Highway 29 in front of that building uh, to address that, that uh, hazard. Uh, it apparently is in such a precarious position that it may fall into the, into the highway. And so um, we, are, uh, we have shut that building down obviously and we are, uh, we are addressing that problem right now. See, Mayor, you have one question about uh, Red Cross. Are they here? Have they assisted? And if you can tell me how they have, if they have at all? Red Cross was in the room um, from the very beginning, and they were with us all day, all the way to the uh, to the uh, closure of the facility. And um, they assisted us by uh, providing um, uh, sheltering uh, for those folks that we uh, expected uh, might need shelter, and um, and uh, did so until we determined that there was no need. And uh, and that they uh, today, I believe, they have moved up to Napa. Uh, but they stand ready again to assist us if uh, they, they've made that very clear. If we need help, uh, they're prepared to come back and help. And to be clear, do you feel as though you have everything under control with your current services? You're not looking for volunteers or anything like that, correct? We're not looking for volunteers. We have had many generous offers from, uh, from volunteers as well as from other agencies. We'll continue to monitor our situation to make sure that uh, uh, if we do need them, we will take advantage of that. Uh, but at this point, we, we are doing all right, other than the, the additional inspectors. I mean, that's really, as this incident I just reported to you, this is the kind of thing that we want to be on top of as quickly as possible because we, we want to make sure that nobody, nobody gets injured, nobody gets hurt uh, because of something that, you know, was un, 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 unidentified before and now is, uh, is a problem.